It's not far. It's just, you know, it's just vertical. We could always just wait until they come back to town. Yeah, we'll we'll investigate the mine if we if we. Uh, do you, now notice that when you talk to the locals, none of them mention anything about a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch. Do you want to bring that up? Oh, def oh, definitely. I'll just say strange matters, that kind of thing, superstitious stuff. What you, well, and, some... everyone, and everyone gives you the same question: strange matters. What kind of strange matters are you talking about? And you know, I, uh, yeah, you know, uh, monsters. You know, I, monsters. I, you know, I, uh, you know, like, like I know, right? The, the, you know, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be on their level. You know, so that they don't get away. What James is trying to say here is, have you seen any very large naked gorilla running around lately? Uh, any guys <laughs> like that? Apparently, I, I feel a lot more comfortable hanging out in the woods. I'd feel a lot more comfortable if you weren't in my store. Yeah, and I just there you go, James. There's your answer. Yeah, and I I look at him with look at him like thanks, like with a sarcastic G. Thanks. Um, but more importantly, who had their eyes peeled? Uh, that was me. Uh, yeah. As you guys go around town, you can't help but notice that you're being followed. Uh, I will make a mental note of who these people look like. It they a, undoubtedly look like detectives. The guy who's been following you and been reading the same newspaper every single time, like he's just leaning against another building, cat corner across the one dirt road that goes to the center of town and mm -hmm. pretending to read a newspaper. It's a small fruit bat type guy. Uh, but, um, or micro bat. But every time you turn around, he's there. Right. Uh, once again, you talk to several locals, and they they tell you about about that. But they all uh, sorry, they'll tell you about yeah. You might want to ask the miners something up there. And no one, no one's even heard of like a monster. Like even though you can bring it up kind of subtly, they'll say, you know, uh, I yeah, we've never. If you heard a story about a monster up here, we've never heard anything. Uh, so armed with this knowledge that the locals don't seem to know anything, and you're being tailed, James, what do you want to do? I'm gonna wait. Hmm. I'm gonna wait for the Myers to come back. Okay. So, do you go back to the bar, which would be the most likely place to find them? Yeah, the bar. Okay. And um, what about you, Martin? Uh, I think I agree. The bar seems like the best place to wait at the moment, and it's unlikely that we're going to lose him at the one place in town where everyone's going to be. So. I will just keep my mind focused on this and deal with it later. The two of you go back to the bar. Dante and uh, Zamek are setting up. Uh, I'm assuming that to set up your show is going to be a role of uh, um, body, mind, craft, and presence. Because I guess uh, presence is the skill of showmanship. Uh, do any of you have uh, performance as an ability? I do. Performers give you a bonus D12, but are you bossing other people around, or are you setting up the stuff yourself? Oh, of course I'm bossing Zonic around. Then you may roll an extra D12 from leadership, but all you do is give him an assistance. I do have... Wait, what did you say? Performance or presence? Performance. So, uh, presence is a die that you roll. If you have the gift of performance, it's just a flat D12 to anything related to the Am theater. I rolling okay. both uh, to boss him around, or just the one? I would roll Minecraft Presence uh, D and both D12s. Uh, in fact, sorry, don't bother rolling. Just give him a bonus D8. Got it. So you'll Sounds get a bonus. Like should be in the reverse. He's your assistant, but yeah. Yeah, D D Dante just gives Zomek a bonus D. No, not there, there. No, no, no. <laughs> the cabinet with the false back. That's the cabinet. That's just hollow. When we do the sword cutting... Zomic, which <laughs> tricks are you using for your part of the show? Okay, so you guys set up, and once again, you know, like, you guys are seasoned veterans of the stage. You set this up just fine. Uh, um, you don't disturb any uh, of the jug band. Uh, I, I guess uh, my jug band joke is so terrible. It's always the Doobie Brothers. Doobie, 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 Doobie. But uh, I'm not very funny, so I'm going to stop that. 
Um, and it's not Emmett Otter's Jug Man. That would be a good jug. You guys remember Emmett Otter, right? Unfortunately not. I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. Uh, one of the better specials. But um, Yeah, yeah, it was from the blooper reel. So before the miners come back, as Martin and James are sitting at their table, I guess, taking notes or reading the Communist Manifesto, um, a that bat who's been following you around town sits down at your table and says, you look like gentlemen of a refined palate. May I tempt you with some wine? Wine, huh? Yeah, it's imported from Tricoga. Really now? Uh, remind me about prohibition. Uh, that definitely includes wine. Well, it's only illegal to buy or sell it. It's not illegal to consume it. Right. I'm here to just give to you some for free. Mm, nah. I gotta make sure I can uh, move their stage props around later. Oh, you're here with the entertainers. Don't mind if I pour myself a glass, then? Hey. It's not my cup. Do How about you? you want. How about you, he says, pointing at James. Are you a teetotaler, or do you take a tipple? And no, and no thanks. I'm, I'm under investigation right now. I just wanted to show you some local hospitality. By the way, when this bat talks, he's not talking with the accent that a lot of the locals have. I have not tried imitating the local accent because I can't do uh, the kind of uh, accent these folks have. Right. Uh, fair enough. <clears throat> but he doesn't have one. Barnes is kind of making another mental note. Uh, and he'll go ahead and uh, just take a sip of water from his own cup and go, Yeah. So the... what do you do around here? You work up at the mines too? Uh, yeah, I work in around town. Um, you know, um, you can call me Ray. Uh, I work with the... the, the uh, I work in a capacity to assist the... Um, mining trust to make sure everything's running smoothly and so i like to get to know the locals you know let them know you know uh you know find out what's bothering them how we can serve them better that sort of thing and couldn't help but notice that you two just rolled into town started asking a lot of questions well my friend here has it in his brain that there's some kind of giant gorilla thing as far as i understand it and I think he's insane, but now see, well, that's racist. And, and now wait a minute, you know, I get to it. I you see, I don't believe... judge, you know, people uh, off of them. I'm sure we can change his opinions on his, this racist endeavor uh, with with patience. The, uh, I go. I don't wait, really wait. believe Would this. Would that actually be a conversation in the 1920s? There's a lot of racist <laughs> conversations happening during this time in literature and popular the, conversation. We're being super cheeky, I think. <laughs> Uh, we're being a little super cheeky, but more to the point, he, uh, the Ray is going to squint at um, uh, at James here. I'm sorry, you folks have advantage over me. I didn't get your names. Uh, James. John Cat. It, James. You guys giving them false? You, are you giving him false names? I'm giving him a false name. I think James was saying his real name. All right. Yeah, Do I, 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 I am. I don't. I didn't think I would need to. Well, no, if you're, uh, when the agitator lies, that's a role of will and deceit. Indeed. He might definitely see through me. Well, let's it's see what almost happens. almost like he, he was tailing you like a professional before, and now he's asking you questions like a professional. It's almost like he might be a professional. I know. Let's see. I definitely don't have deceit. It, this is a bold-faced lie, too. I got nothing for it. I could always turn the table on him later with another roll, but we'll save that for when this... Well, that will die. Hey, it's five. <sighs> okay. Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Green, was it? Yes. Um, so, you folks don't look like the type of folks coming up here for mining work. Mr. Uh, Mr. Green, what brings you here? The, oh, the, uh, yeah, that you're looking for a monster. Yeah, I'm just trying to prove whether it's true or false. I think it's false, but uh, I'm trying to find the evidence. Hmm. So, uh, which, I'm sorry, which news service did you say you represented? 
oh, I'm in. The, oh, I'm a freelancer. Uh, at, at first, like Ray, Ray looks at you with an expression that looks like all oh, they're serious, and you say you're a freelancer, and his ears are just kind of droop, and he's just going to look at you with a withering glance, and say, "Hmm." Well, if you're looking for sort of sensationalist stories, allow me as an esteemed member of this community to let you know that you've pretty much, you know, are chasing some sort of, uh, you know, swamp gas rumor because there's nothing unusual or newsworthy going on. See, that's what I told him. But you came all this way with him. Well, he more tagged along with me and them. And that's the only reason why the two of you came here, he says, looking at both of you intently. Definitely didn't come here to taste the local flavor. He just frowns at his cup of water a little bit. And James, how do you respond to that when he turns his gaze upon you? Oh, I look... Look, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I'm just here to look into things. Make a, uh, what skills do you have useful in convincing me you're not here to make any trouble? I do have presence. Presence would be the skill to convince me that you're so badass I shouldn't interfere with you. Um, negotiation would probably be the best skill for this. I have nothing in negotiation. You could roll presence and just try to convince him that you're not worth giving trouble. Martin could always intercede on your behalf for that. You could assist one another. We're pretty badass. Uh, so I will go ahead and... Oh, James, you can also back that up with your willpower die. Your Roll your will die. Yeah, body, will, presence. Actually, just uh, will say... and presence for this. You're not threatening to beat me up. That's fair enough. Uh, also, that's gonna be one and a d12. Uh, James, uh, you have dice in presence, so there's a special rule in the game called uh, favored use, which is if you have a favorite use of a skill, it's like a sub use of a skill. Uh, I don't think it'll fit here. Uh, you don't, oh, do you already have a favorite use of presence? Yeah, when, pre when presenting evidence. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, and you're actually lying about that. All right, even with uh, um, um, Martin actually gives you an assisting die of a D8, so you can roll hey, a just, D8. just lay off of him. He's just trying to relax now. So it looks like Ray is about, you know, like this makes James a little nervous, but when Martin pipes up and says that, you know, it takes some of the heat, you know, the, the, the back to a look. Says, well, I'm not sure what to make of two gentlemen uh, freelancers, uh, you know, with nothing on their heels, coming up here and refusing a free drink. So you might find uh, that while I was here extending the olive branch, other people might not be as generous as I am. So now that I've gone ahead and saved you a lot of effort by telling you something interesting around here, you can just wait for the next bus and be on your way. Now, excuse me, I'm leaving. I have some business. And unless you guys stop him, Ray will get up and leave. Uh, I'm not going to stop him. Starting right. a fight with this person who's going to report back one way or another or be noticed missing uh, would be foolish. Okay, uh, Ray goes to the corner of the bar and enters the phone booth. Remember phone booths? Those were a thing. Don't get trapped in mm. one by a sniper. Dang, that's going to make it harder to listen into him from all the way over here at the bar, isn't it? One thing I miss about Cincinnati is uh, one of the hotels here had uh, phone booths. And not only did they have phone booths, they had a little fan on the top. You could turn it on so you could smoke while you're on the phone. <laughs> Certainly That's made nice uh, Clark Kent's modern, uh, job of turning into Superman harder. <laughs> yep. Technology working to solve your problem. It's the Carew Tower, one of the most modern places in Cincinnati. But, um, uh, yeah. So, yeah, he'll go in there and make a phone call. And unless you guys do something weird, he'll make the phone call and then leave. 
And Martin's just going to watch. He's going to shake his head and say, drinking's just such a terrible habit, isn't it? And then he's going to pull out uh, a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can smoke here in the bar. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> We don't actually have a cigarette girl, so... That's okay, I brought my own. Um, I imagine out here is a lot of roll your own. Uh, eventually, sundown happens, and... Um, uh, I guess a bunch of a bunch of musician guys in goofy straw hats and <laughs> uh, cheap cheesecloth overalls will come onto the stage and look at like Dante and Zomax. Hey, what are you guys doing here? We're both performing a band tonight. Yeah, apparent. Wait, are we opening for them or are they opening for us? We well, are that's opening when... for them. They are You're the open... main act. We are the. Yeah, that's up. when the bartender will come by and say, no, lads, it's okay. They're the opening act. We don't need an opening act. We're at the Doobie Brothers. Uh, well, can say... I get an autograph? I love the Doobie Brothers. Ah, you all are right, falling uh, all okay. over them. Uh, what skills are you All right, there, Soggy Bottom Boys. Soggy Bottom. That's right. That's better. The Soggy Bottom Boys. Do you have a... Uh, oh, man um, of constant sorrow. I am a big fan. Uh, do you have any... Do you have skills useful for fawning over people? Uh, Deceit and presence both come to mind. Yeah. Um, do you have, like, four or five dice? In? Uh, let's see here. I have plenty... I have board net, yeah. You can just rotate it, and they'll, they'll calm down. So, roading is, we just give you one success for two dice, and they'll really calm down. Yeah, I would have uh, three to four dice, depending on what you would want me to tag on. Eventually, the I mean, the bus after, will at a road, I would have that. Uh, you will hear some rambunctiousness, and eventually the bus pulls up. And it is full of dirty miners. Ah, perfect. Uh, they're not, like, as dirty as they were before, but, um, they are, uh, they're still a little bit, uh, um, you know, they're people, and they'll, like, Tired, fill off the dirty. police very quickly. Um... Come on, yeah. Uh, Miss Tumble, of course, is used to this kind of um, uh, activity and immediately has uh, some locals immediately taking people's orders and that sort of thing. Suddenly, the place goes from empty to full. Oh, and I think at this point, Martin is keeping his eye out again and is reasonably certain his contact must be here. And and I go and question all the miners about you know the tour the. Uh, Sasquatch, that kind of thing, you well, know, well, anything. Well, the anything... children know. That's a uh, so yes, yeah, so you guys, guys recanvass uh, the crowd. I'd like you to go ahead and make rolls of mind and questioning with a bonus D eight because you successfully canvassed earlier. Do any of you have? No one actually has uh, carousing. Uh unfortunately, none of you are are, are party drinkers. Uh, so let's see. So I still don't have questioning. Uh, but if James is willing, let me lean on him. Plus 1d8 for mine. Uh, comes out to 1. Or not even 1, I failed. I don't find anybody. Okay, so you'll start, like, you know, people here to, a lot, of, first of all, a lot of people here would normally be rude and say, like, hey, we're trying to drink here. We Hard day at work. I don't I want to questions like that. I go home to my wife. <laughs> so, um, but you have three successes. James is very good at getting people to talk. So yeah, so some people are saying like, uh, uh, when you ask them like, what's going on at the mine? I say, yeah, what's going on at the mine? We're all we're incredibly angry. Not only have they not raised our wages to match uh, um, the increasing workload, they've increased our workload. Boo! And then there was, and then there's poor Rags, he, you know, uh, um, getting mauled. Oh man, in fact, uh, you're gonna be lucky enough uh, or unlucky enough 
Uh, there are two people who refuse to talk about it, but one of the uh, miners is a rough and tumble woman by the name of Stella, a donkey. And she'll tell you, oh, that's how uh, I've been working mines, you know, up and down, you know, I, I've been a pitch donkey for, you know, nigh on 20 years. And what happened to Rags? I was one of the people who was unfortunate enough to find him. That's over in the new uh, shaft they had us digging. Uh, they found uh, him and they can say all they want that he was caught in the machinery or caught in the gears. But um, no, nope, I've never seen, uh, you know, nothing shaped like that before. But then, you know, they wouldn't hardly let us, uh, like, you know, get anything or a funeral. They, those, those uh, you know, damn suits, they came and scraped up his body, cleaned the whole thing up, and then sequestered it uh, up in uh, the, the company hospital. They know something. They're not telling us. I guess that'd be like them to try to make it seem as if nothing happened, huh? Uh... Well, this is terrible. Uh, and but a lot of other people like like say the same. You know, like like Stella. Look, I know that you think you see things and stuff, but look, it, it's there's what happened to Rags is going to happen to the rest of us. So we're going to work all of us to the bone, and then we're going to uh, cut uh, and, we're, and you know we're all going to get your know, eyes gouged out, and our limbs torn off, and then we're going to have nothing to show for it. Uh, I asked them about, you know, like the tours and stuff, the cars and the, like anything unusual. Well, yeah, it's unusual. Not only they have us uh, digging a whole offshoot uh, into a, another complex that has to be dead. It probably died like you know, 30 or 40 years ago, which is why it's all marked off on all the maps. Uh, this one raccoon guy just, you know, reaches in his pocket and gets out a piece of paper. It's, uh, um, and then it's covered in dust, so he blows off the dust into uh, Martin's face. <laughs> this is really interesting. <laughs> you can see right here that this must be the place that ran dry, you know, of, of not 50 years ago. Why would we even be in there? Uh, you know, uh, it, it's some sort of crazy tale, and they probably closed it because it's dangerous. That's what must have happened to Rags. Uh-huh. So you're saying it was uh it was cordoned off then? Then how drags get down there? Well, this happens all the time. Look, I don't expect you city folks to know much about this. Uh, but um, you know, sometimes sections of the mine they just ain't safe. Uh, you, uh, you know, water gets in. Sometimes there's bad air. Uh, uh you know, sometimes uh, uh, there's rock slides or narrow pinch points, uh, quakes, mudslides. All kinds of terrible things that can happen up there in there, those hills. Not to mention that sometimes there just isn't anything there. Uh, uh, if uh, you know, normally before we would go and and looking into another part of a mine complex like this, they bring in surveyors. They'd shore things up. They they uh, go through proper procedure. Instead, they just have us digging sideways right now, and not even tell us what we're looking for. But but okay. he said they were trying to break into this old section, but they clearly have ways in already. Why not just use that? What? What's the point? Uh, well, you guys rolled three successes, so uh, you know, like you'll go. You know, so the miners are kind of like mumble a little bit, but you know, you guys see. Yeah, I, 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 I've asked him about. You know, I've heard reports that there was some kind of monster there. What happened to Rags was the monster, the many tentacled monster of capitalistic greed. Damn straight. And like, it's like, and, and well, <laughs> Stella will shake her head and, and, and say, "There's something ain't right in there. There, there's something that uh, I'm telling you. Those places were sure, you know, you know that mine. Uh, you know, we had to dig through walls that were clearly sealed off." you know, years before we even got there. There's something terrible inside there they didn't want us to know about. Huh. And uh, what's this about these haunted tours? Haunted tours? Where'd you hear about haunted tours? I saw, I saw the, adver I saw, I was looking at this place and I saw an advertisement for it. Is it still uh, by some guy named uh... Rufus Tully? Yeah, Tully. 
Um, uh, uh, Rufus Tully. Rufus Tully, isn't that, uh, isn't that Matt's father? No, no, that's Matt's uncle. Says a uh, uh, says another guy. Uh, he, uh, that's uh, Rufus was Matt's uncle. Uh, that that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Who? Uh, uh, you guys heard from Matt from Matt Tully that there's monsters up here? No, uh, no, it was it was it. No, it was from a. No, it was no. I got it in a one article. I found it in an article. You know, I showed them the. Uh, page. Well, you probably oh um, uh, or yeah, photograph uh, mimeograph of it. Uh, they'll yeah. squint at it. Sorry, we've got miners' eyes. Um. Well, that sounds like uh, uh, we don't know much about Rufus, but yeah, the Tullys, they're not like, you know, they're not like other people. They, uh, the Tullys mostly, you know, keep to themselves. Like, they don't come here to drink or listen to the Soggy Bottom Boys. Soggy Bottom Boys? I heard there was going to be a magic show. What? Magic's the devil's tools. Everyone get your pitchforks and rings. Up, hold up. It's just magnets, I assure you. Oh, magnets? No, no. Come on. Everyone's familiar with car- carnival and vaudeville at this point. You don't even know what the uh, the freaks are. How could you say it's magnets? Yeah. Don't you get it? They're all good, God-fearing people. Magnets? Magic you, mean, real. you mean the miner's enemy. <laughs> we don't cotton the magnets around here. We say that rocks should come apart, not stay together by unseen forces. That's the <laughs> devil's hand. And James is wondering if he's actually gotten some evidence or just gotten no. I need some more Malorton before I answer that. All right, sorry, I'm going off on a magnet Well, James, it sounds like if you want to meet them, they might actually know where they live. Oh, yeah, well, Tully uh, mostly keeps after he comes home back uh to to his house he's lucky enough to own a house because he's a legacy his family has been here since the town was uh founded hmm. huh, i'll go look at him yeah it's just outside of town you uh, can't miss it okay uh, uh it's uh do you want to come mario Martin will, like, look around the crowd, realize he has no chance of spotting his contact because he utterly failed and kind of shrugs his shoulders. Ah, I guess it's something to do. All right. Meanwhile, the crowd's already excited. Magnets, 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 magnets. (laughs) Gee, thanks, guys. I mean, are Um, are we performing or... Well, yeah, Miss Tumble will get up on stage and say, now uh, we have a special uh, unscheduled uh, event. Uh, we have here a show of, uh, uh, let's, of Dirty the Original. I'm oh, sorry, Dante, Dante the Original. Dante, Dante the Original. Woo, take your top off. Woo. That would be most disappointing, and you have many fine-looking women around here. You don't need to me for the undressing. They all crack up in laughter. Wow, it must be one of that observational humor we hear from the cities, where they say the opposite of what's true. <laughs> yes, you are quite the welcoming people. Quite much Ooh. more so than the... Uh... Get to the magnets already! All right, all right. It's it's a trick that involves a little bit of working up first. You see, for the first time, when after I was kidnapped by the Romani of Italy, I was arrested by the police. And I want Zomic to be coming Ooh, up. Oh, police! I want Zomic to be coming up on stage with uh, chains and uh, locks and uh Yep, a I bag. have the manacles already. Yes. And to ensure that I could not escape and run back out to the countryside, they locked my wrists together as such as my compatriot will round do to me. And I'll dramatically lock, start, you know, basically manacling him. 
Right, and then they manacled my feet together to make sure that I could not run. And then I follow suit. And they wrapped the chains between my arms and my legs to ensure that I had no degree of movement. And I make sure to do enough dramatic flourishes as I wrap the chain around his body. I would like you to go ahead and make a drama roll. A drama roll. Well, presence and uh, deceit, because you're lying to them with the chains. Do you have performance as an ability? Yes. Okay, and there's performance. Uh, do you want to roll separately, or is, since Amek is the assistant, is he assisting you? I will assist him. I okay. have both deceit and presence. And will! So you should be good at this. Also, the chains aren't a lie. Uh, I mean, there is a lie involved, but it's not the chains. Okay, but I would admit, I, since the whole thing about the Rome money and that kind of stuff, your whole cover story, that's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, the next yeah, step is I, I'm going to ask somebody to come up on stage to inspect all the locks and chains and everything to make sure that they're real. I would like you to throw in your negotiation at the same time. Don't have it. Then we're done talking, aren't we? We'll have to lean on your performance skills. Yep. Well, I'm waiting to see what that assist is. Oh, yeah. Well, assistance right, bonus I... is back, so you can go ahead and roll on that. So I roll the same things, right? Yep, you roll the same things. Uh I have six successes. Okay, your assistant is, you know... Terrible at their job. Yeah, I knew that. He doesn't actually injure himself. (laughs) Trips over the chains, strangles himself to death. Well, Zomek might as well not be there, because that's one, two, three, four, five successes... Six. Six successes. Yes, it's almost like you're a professional entertainer. So, um, basically, if I'm understanding correctly, the act is he chains you up and then does what to you? Well, if you want me to uh, skip the the storytelling part, he's going to chain me up, he's going to put a bag over my head, I'm going to have an audience member come up, they're going to inspect the chains and the locks and verify that they're all real. They do. Uh, Uh... I'm going to be placed into a a box that's on the stage. The moment I step into the box, the box is going to crumble because it's fake sides, walls, and everything, and I'm not going to be in it. Mm. Uh, And in the confusion of the crowd, what will happen? You know, I have the... uh, I have picks in my mouth, basically. I'm doing that whole maneuver. And as fast as possible... I will have snuck around the back of the uh, the stage in the confusion, and I would have taken a seat somewhere in the crowd. It's a whole, um, we call it, misdirection trick. Uh, okay. and, and when everyone's confused, I will be the first one to start applauding so that everyone will then look at me and it's like, oh, what's he doing in the crowd? Right, because there is a slight problem that they don't actually have spotlights. So, yeah. But no, despite all the setbacks and all of that with six successes, I mean... Um... You know, James and Martin, who are outside because they went off to go search for something, you know, will hear the crowd go, ooh, ah, it's amazing. I thought after <laughs> I saw the Soggy Bottom Boys jump band, I heard music that it was the voice of angels, but now I've seen a miracle. Seems like they're, seems like they're all too good. That's all, all right. fake anyway. Um, I do, do love know? me some Soggy Bottom Boys. Dante and Zomic, you've done these kind of venues before. I assume you passed the hat. Uh, you know, not for a small mining town. These people don't have the money to spare, and I got paid up front. Okay, some people throw nickels at you. Ow! <laughs> You're wounded by nickels! Ah, oh my god! Roll the soak, quick! Not how I thought I'd go. Our, all of our wealth is in gypsum! Throw gypsum rocks at him! Um... But more importantly, so Martin and James, uh, after you leave and there and like this town might as well be a ghost town because there's no one around. Right, the whole township is in that place. But they told you where Tully's place was, and you can also see the mining. You know, like pretty much looks like the picture I showed you. Once again, not that far from the town, but you can see that's like a forty-five degree incline. Right. Uh, and as we're leaving, I. I'm going to more or less just assume someone probably is fo- going to try to follow us. So I will actually take uh, James by the arm and kind of go, dodge this way, over here. They won't see us. 
Uh, it, and we'll go one way and then turn towards the actual location. If you want to shake any shadows that are following you, that is going to be a roll of speed, mind, and evasion. All right. Speed and mind. I can pull that off, maybe. That is one success at an eight. Okay. I also need, uh, if you're dragging James with you, he needs to make the same roll. And if he doesn't have any evasion, he only rolls speed and mind. You are, can't even remotely assist him as you only have one success. Yes, unfortunately. Just a minute. It's okay. Okay. Uh, as you guys are bumbling around in the dark, going, "Wow, there's not but a lot I, of places." But I do have hiding as a, as a favorite. Oh, you have stealth. Stealth gives you a bonus uh, d12 to this roll. No, 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 no. It, it just says hiding oh, as hiding? a favorite for. Um. Well, that's well, but you didn't roll any ones, so that doesn't matter. Uh, favorites let you reroll once. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Well, while the two of you are like going, wow, it's not easy to shake, you know, in the city, there's all kinds of blind alleys and dark shadows and that kind of stuff you can hide in. But this is like, this is street. And then there are these buildings all like spread apart with nothing in between them. But there will be a guy who calls from you from behind a shed. Come here, quick. Uh, Mark will place? turn and look to see who it is. You can't see in the darkness. Do you go where they uh, that mysterious whispering voice tells you to go? Do you pull out your gun and open fire? What do you do? Uh, I think uh, what Barton will do is he will go for a uh, quick scare stunt as he approaches and go, better not be messy with me, local. So you do approach? Yes. He says, come on, we gotta get you guys out. Uh, uh, um, quick. Come with me. I can. Uh, it's not safe where you are. Do you go with the mysterious figure? You know what? Uh, I'm looking at James. I'm willing to. What does James feel? James, do you go with the mysterious figure? Well, there, that bat was clearly, clearly going with us. It's like, okay, there probably is some danger here. I'll go with them. Both of you get to roll a bonus d12 as someone assists your stealth. Amazing. Hey, that got me my second success. <clears throat> And, and hopefully I, this will get you one. All right, I will have to share, but at least we now have one apiece. Um, yeah, well, actually, James, roll another bonus d8. There we go. Hey, you, you one we of your successes. It. You'll it's drop it. to one success and give him a bonus d8. But yeah, so it's the two of you empty can down the road, James. The two of you will scramble, and he's going to grab you and pull you uh uh, behind this fence that's got like a couple of ruined barrels on it. Uh, just get down! Uh, when you get closer uh, to the figure, you'll notice that he is a Ooh. Uh, right, so I will go ahead. I will everybody put my shut up. up my lips. And like, like, like James will like fidget a little bit and I, I guess like uh, or uh, uh, his tail will stick out and I guess um, you know, Martin will grab it and pull it back inside. Yeah, to like push his antlers back down behind the trash can. You will hear a figure walking around. You won't see them. And then you'll hear them walk away. Okay. Um, you know, and then the weasel says, okay, I think he's gone for right now. And I whispered to Martin, hey, isn't that your contact? Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. Yeah, Where do you, suggest you know, we you could... guys, look, uh, you city guys shouldn't really be up here. You're sticking out like sore thumbs. I know that. You got a place? Um, no, not really. This entire town is full of, uh, you know, it flints. Uh, you know, they're going to mess you up. What are you guys doing here anyway? Uh, I'll came... tell you once we get out. We got somewhere we can go. We'll talk on the way. Oh, crud. Um, uh... Uh, come, uh, um, here. We'll, we'll go by the abandoned barn. All right. Uh, so we'll go by the abandoned barn, and, um... Uh, you travel outside of the city. You guys are in the up north after dark. It is, like, so dark you can't see your hands at the ends of your arms. I got a flashlight. Don't turn that on! 
Yeah, <laughs> don't. They'll see you from miles away. Look, uh, uh, he's gonna, you know, he's look. Uh, are you guys newspaper writers or something? Kind uh, of. Better. You're Manny, aren't you? How do you know my name? I'm a friend. Uh, the local. Uh... Well, I'm don't remember what the name was again. Don't, don't don't call me Manny around here. My name is John Arbuckle. Oh, I went with John Cat. Um, great. Yeah, they won't know their pseudos. But yeah, no. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, you, you, the Flints are cracking down harder than ever. I'm a little worried they did something horrible to uh, one of the locals. Yeah, we've been hearing a bit about that. Apparently, they're keeping a tight lid on the body. I think they probably just got overzealous. Those Flintheart people are the worst. But yeah, no, this entire, uh, everything's terrible. They've extended hours. Uh, they're not testing the, uh, the caverns uh, for the right materials. I've almost got everybody you know, on our side to agree that we're going to launch a general strike. And then this poor thing happens to Rax. Yeah, it sounded like it got them all scared. Same thing's going to happen to them. I don't blame uh, them. It's the worst. <clears throat> if, if we can actually, like, you know, get proof of, uh, that Rags was actually taken out by those, those Flint Heart folks, we could definitely get these folks mobilized and get rid of uh, the horrible uh, capitalist menace. That's interesting. From what I heard, Rags was just some sort of poor town drunk. That's exactly they what they... Him? That's exactly going to be their cover story. Look, uh, Rags is just like everyone else around here. Undereducated and overworked. So they were just making an example of him. Of that, that's how that works, isn't it? These people are like... Is. These people What's... are like, uh, you know, they're simple folk of the earth. They're impressed by simple things like magnets and chain. I... I've noticed, Martin says, like, looking away. <laughs> but, Me too. But he didn't do anything to stand out, did he? Like, he was specifically targeted, or they just decided, like, eh, we're just going to kill somebody? Well, I, you know, the problem is I don't, uh, uh, nobody seems to know anything. Some people are saying that he was, uh, that fell into the machinery, but I'm not buying any of that because uh, Rags wasn't, you know, on the machinist division, he's on the hand tools division because he's not good at machines. Uh, why he, uh, you know, the fact that he's doing scab overtime, I don't know why they, why the, I didn't tell anybody to give anybody any trouble for working off the clock. So, uh, you know, we're supposed to strike to oppose that, not mess anyone up. And no one seems to corroborate the story. The only people left who could actually mess him up like that would have to be the Flints, because they're the only ones who could do that. What else could it possibly be? Says Manny, shrugging and holding his paws up in the air. It makes so, a lot of sense, I gotta say. And I, and I know this is gonna sound stupid, but I ask, I ask him, uh, you know, I take up the little article, do you know anything about... I think you cut off there. You said, do you know anything about... Uh, I say I say, hand in the article, you know, about the monster, and I say, do you know anything about about this article, dude? We can't see; it's pitch black in here. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, let me tell you about it. Uh, give me the flashlight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, or, 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 here, hold on. I'll get my own flashlight. Yeah, out. we'll I'm get into pirate. like the barn here where it obscures the light a little bit. Well, yeah, but they're looking for you. You upset them quite a bit. That's why I'm thinking this must be a Flintheart thing because they wouldn't be all. Why would they be all riled up to cover up what you know a mining accident if it was really an accident? I understand. There's no chance we're going to be able to get at the body directly, and not like I'm a doctor or anything. Well, not Neither the way you, you are guys you. are sneaking around. You might as well be banging pans together. Yeah, I'm not exactly subtle, and Martin just like rubs the back of his head. Bullet. I'm in the... Anyway, I'm in the... it sounds uh well. I don't know a roof is Tully, uh, but there's a Matt Tully who lives in town. Uh, he hasn't yeah, been coming have... to any of the the meetings or anything like that. He just he's just over there. See you, and he points out the barn. Uh, and there's like this little tiny like stone house, like made of mortared stones, sitting all by its lonesome. Uh, with smoke coming out of the chimney uh, and a light on in the window. 
Uh, do you know the appropriate time to come to go over? Appropriate? Well, he's, uh, I guess he's still up. Tully is a little detached. Uh, he's probably got, you know, I don't know, carbon monoxide on the brain. It happens to miners. People around here think he's kind of funny. Uh, uh, duly uh, noted. Yeah, I still need to interview him. Uh, interview uh, him? So you are newspaper reporters. Uh, kind of. I'm more of a freelancer more than anything. Excellent. I'm, Fight the I'm power. I'm better. I'm an anarchist. Yeah, anarchist. I will reach out and I will put a hand on his shoulder and go, and I promise you, as long as he's meddling around and I'll like nudge over to James, uh, I will do what I can to try to find the evidence. Well, and look, we can have the strength. Bring up too much agitprop in front of Tully. He's not like, you know, uh, He's not really I, into the cause. I solemnly swear not to throw the book at his face. Um, Drat, I was. Uh, I appreciate your help, comrade, and our solidarity against this. I, if we could get uh, Rags's body, uh, you know, out of the place or get some photos of it. I mean, he's got a camera. I could, tr uh, you know, I know the way up there. I could try to help sneak you guys into the mine infirmary to get photos. Now there's an idea. Right. And, and just as a reminder, Green, you have an infrared camera. We'll take pictures in the dark. Uh-huh. You, you, won't, you won't be able to see it until later, which is my favorite part about monster hunting. We took a photo of it and didn't know what it was until later. Uh, yeah, we just knew where the table was. <laughs> so, all right. So you guys have a cho uh, three choices here. You could go interview Tully. Follow uh, Manny Albright here to the mine, or do something else I haven't thought of. I'm go I'm still about Tully. Okay, Green wants to go talk to Tully. Uh, I do like the idea of looking for the body, but at the same time, that seems like where they'd be looking for us too. Oh, uh, you guys are uh, wasting time. All I right. I do agree, Green. If you saw it, the body, do you think you'd be able to? tell how it died i'm not really much of a forensic i'm not really actually uh, i need to ask a question green how much academics do you have uh for career one one D. okay and how much observation do you have uh if you're two, speaking two. cut out uh, I, okay, I think I have what one d six and one d eight for for ops. Okay, um, James Green is the most likely character in the entire party to tell you what killed somebody. Yep, I think maybe Zomic has a good bit of academics too, but uh, that's still pretty good right there. Okay, you could well, probably tell the difference between falling down a mine shaft, getting eaten by machinery, and a monster taking a bite out of his neck. Manny says, yeah. I, think you're, I think you're wasting your time with Tully. I'm going to go ahead and take care of some other things if that's what you're going to do. So it's your last chance. Either come with me to the mine uh, or do whatever business you want. This is our <sighs> chance, James. We got help. It's all, all on you, right. James. All right. All, all right. The, yeah, this, 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 this rags fellow does sound like my best leave right now. Okay, I'll... All right, so... We're He's in. going to lead you up one of the trails up to the mines. Meanwhile, back at the bar, Dante and Zomek, do you have like a, what was your finale for your entire act? That would have been uh, Zomek's act. What's your act, Zomek? Zomek, do you have an act? It's your time to shine. All right. So after that, after that little misdirection, I guess I will, I will finish off. I'm, I'm going to cheat, because I don't have an act still. Dante's going to realize I don't have an act, so I'm just going to do this whole stage performance. What I really want to do is I want to conduct the... Um, I have it right here. The first ritual to curry favor with my... Um, with my uh, ancestral spirits. Okay. And so I can... I, I've done this before, but I'm going to do this basically disguised as a as a folklore myth so i get into this entire story about how i come from this foreign land and since these are all miners going to say where i come from we used to think the mountains were like the back of the giant 
turtle that held the earth up and that you know there was this great god you know and who used to you know strike try to strike the turtle down and the sparks made the milky way sky and that's where we discovered fire and all this other bit and i'm going to try to do this ritual hold on a second let me just copy and paste it so you know what i'm talking about and there you go and so basically I am going to try to petition my ancestors to figure out, is there an actual monster and can they help me hunt it down? So you do this on stage. Okay. Yes. Make a roll. All right. So what am I rolling? Uh, to uh, Ritual is mind, will, and academics. Mind, will, academics. Okay. And you must and commit a power die. I assume you petition the spirit of your ancestors for an extra D12. Right? Booyakasha. Two successes. And it's a first circle, so I only needed one. Right. So you'll cast the spell, and then you enter a trance. Right. Uh, you, uh, the trance, you can see a dark shadow. Like So you, you see the same bar, but instead it's lit with red, as if lit by uh, flames. And a dark shadow falls over everyone. And you can see it's got large clawed hands. And one of the clawed hands picks one of the people up. And they go, ah! And they scream. And then picks another one up and tears them to pieces. And just starts going through the crowd. Uh, then the roof blows off. And the shadow retreats up the hill to the mine. While you're doing all of that, you are then awakened from your trance when the crowd starts to boo because it's just like, hey, he's just sitting there on the stage staring at nothing. Well, I wanted to say that in return for you know showing me this, the magical effect is is when I'm talking about striking the mountain with a spear, you literally see sparks because I'm literally doing it with like a little prop thing, and you see the sparks come out. And yeah, see like the, the the problem is the that's this is only a first circle ritual. It doesn't oh, yeah, actually fine. show anything to anybody. All right, well, I just figured it would be a little cute thing or something. Uh, right, so um, uh, you might be able to use spiritualism for a special effect, but yeah, unfortunately, your magic is folk magic and not very um, um, demonstrative. Seeing that the crowd, we're losing the crowd here, I want to rush back up on stage to try and save this act. Okay. Uh, uh, Zondek, I'd like you to roll a bonus D8, as um, I'm sure Dante can bail you out. Uh, Dante, what do you say to bail him out? Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, grab a, a length of rope that we brought up onto the uh, the stage that we never actually used. And just, you know, I'm going to mime everything as he's talking through whatever his ritual is. And I'm going to do an Indian rope climb. Oh, you're going to use psychokinesis for that? Uh, no, no, because I, unlike uh, Zamek, appreciate the craft. The rope is actually a bunch of uh, broken pieces of bamboo that will stack when weight is put onto them, surrounded by rope, to make it look like just a thick rope, so that when I go to climb it, it'll stiffen, and I'm able to, so long as I keep my balance, uh, climb up what seems to be just a suddenly stiff rope. Okay, uh... The crowd gained some more interest, but they were obviously a lot more impressed by the first part. And eventually, like, uh, well, Tumble, after I come, say, after I, I was hoping that there would be some supernatural effect that would happen when I do this. Yeah, not really with, with a first circle ritual like that. That's not really that impressive. Do you understand how hard an Indian rope climb is? It appears to be it, a rope that's just suspended by midair. It is pretty impressive. Well, anyway, but the first after I get out of my trick was way more impressive. Yeah, after well, of... at least we, a giant shadow monster didn't kill everybody like I thought was being described for a moment. That would have been only, funny. <laughs> only Zamek saw that. Yeah, I didn't realize that was a Zamek only thing until you said that at the very end. I was like, oh god, what did he just do? Well, anyway, once I get out of my trance, I, I segue into the Foggy Bottom Boys. Um, yeah. Woo! Ah. Man. That's neat act to follow, climbing oh, up nothing like that. Sorrow. Yep. I mean, I can always just disappear at the top of the rope. Poof. 
I mean, that's traditionally what you do, but at the same time, you usually have somewhere to disappear to. And again, I don't want to ruin the craft by actually adding real magic to it. All right, so two things. Once we get off the stage, I'm going to assume that me and Dante realize that Martin and uh, James left the, the show while we were in the middle of it. So, A... And B, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Dante we need to get to the mine. Something really serious is happening. Okay. Yeah. Come on, I think that went better than I thought. Well, then you did not hear all the booing, all the booing and the hissing and the. You know, when I started doing my trick and they started to not say they didn't like the talking. I took that to heart and got on with the trick. You made your trick all talking. It's t I don't think you pay very much attention. Okay. Uh, yeah, me I'm, so, I'm sorry, boss. I'm like, I'm really trying, man. But, you know, there's just a lot on me right now. We gotta get to the mine. Okay. So meanwhile, while that's going on, um, Martin and James are being helped up the cliff. I need you guys to roll. Your oh boy. Your body die, your evasion dice, your athletics dice, and a bonus d12. Ooh, okay. So let's see. Body athletics will is the first thing I can click here. My evasion, I can go ahead and click to add that in. And the d12. If you have anything that helps you climb a cliff or be sneaky, that could also help you. Uh, I do have acrobatics. I'm not sure that helps. That helps if I fall. That would help if you fell. So, and since you rolled two successes, you're doing reasonably well. All okay, right. Okay, let's okay, let's hear. Uh, evasion. Right. And D12. And a bonus D12 because you're taking the assistance of Manny. Right, because Manny shows you a trail that you can't easily see. Uh, even though it's dark, because he has local area knowledge. Always useful. Okay, so he's going to lead you up the staggered side of the cliff through the trees. Uh, and eventually you'll get to the mine itself. Uh, none of the, uh, since you guys rolled at least one success, you're not exhausted before you get there. I mean, you guys are kind of tired, but none of you have any debuffs on you. It was physical effort. That's about it. Okay. Uh, he, uh, at, and when he gets you up there, Manny's going to say, oh, Matt, why are there still people here? Look, there's still lights, uh, up there in the main office and lights over there in the infirmary. Who's still here? They must be doing something, those rotten flints. Yeah, what would they be doing up here? They should have been down there with the washboard boys. Uh, th they're planning something. I just know it. Well, we could get a little closer and listen in. Well, I don't know. I thought we brought your buddy here with the camera so he could take photos of the evidence against poor rags. Ain't gonna stay here all night, are they? I don't know. You know, the Flints uh, are the kind of guys who shoot first and ask questions later. Ooh, well... At least it's pretty dark out here. Maybe they won't well, have good aim. Your camera uh, guy here seems a little yellow livered. Uh, no offense. Uh, so, Jimmy, no, what do you no want to do? <laughs> do you want to go uh, check out the body, or do you want to see what's up there in the main office? Uh, as long as someone is around. There's people around, he says. We can see, I can see lights from here. Yeah, the question is, how close... Uh, can we get to the building? Could we look inside? That's a Could question. We listen how, inside? That would be how well you roll on your mind and evasion. Exactly. Mind and evasion. So do you want to go, if you want to go eavesdrop, then we roll mind and evasion. Uh, you guys don't seem entirely unqualified. Uh, I do have dice, which is better than nothing. And Manny, okay, will, uh... give you a bon Manny will give you a bonus D12. Excellent. He's a, he's a team player. He's a communist. He's a wonderful friend. I'm liking him already. So uh, I actually have evasion. I'm pretty sure you have it too, don't you? All right. Yes, so I you do. Guys, you guys will sneak up to the main office. I need you guys to roll mind 